Hey folks, it's Nate, and today I'm going to show you how I custom made some transmission cooling lines for my 2005 Jeep LJ. Alright folks, remember, a great way to support this channel is to subscribe. Not just to support me, but because I try to produce good content for you guys. And if you don't want to miss any of it, subscribe and hit that notification icon so you can get cool tech tips, wheeling videos, and whatever else I decide to produce. I got a podcast in the works, guys. I promise it's coming soon. We got some life stuff we're dealing with. Once it's done, I'm going to see if I can carve out some time to make that start happen. Okay, so I recently came back from a wheeling trip, and I noticed that a problem I've been having had gotten a bit worse. And that problem was that sometimes I would notice a slight wisp of smoke coming from underneath the hood of the Jeep. I wasn't quite sure what it was. For a long time, I've been smelling sort of an oil smell, like a hot oil smell from my engine, which I always assumed was because the valve cover gasket needs replacing, which I have behind the camera. That's another project on my list. Um, but when I started seeing smoke and it didn't smell like burnt oil, I started to worry a little bit. So what I figured out is that when I did the transmission, which there's another video for that, you can go watch that if you want to, um, I disturbed the transmission lines, the transmission cooling lines, which are hard lines that are that run alongside the engine, the 4.0, up to the radiator where there's a, uh, a cooling reservoir, right? So the cooling reservoir is inside of the radiator in the TJ and the XJ and a lot of other Chrysler vehicles and a lot of other vehicles with automatic transmissions. Um, in my case, um, one, everyone recommends that the 42 RLE should be cooled with an external cooler, which you might notice I now have. Um, because I've actually finished this project already. Sorry guys, I forgot to record an intro. Um, and um, the transmission lines themselves, the hard lines, um, they were old and crusty, and I guess when I disturbed them, they got a little bit of a pinhole in them. And that pinhole was right next to my exhaust manifold, so it's spraying transmission fluid under certain circumstances onto the transmission, or onto the exhaust manifold, which of course is hot, and it immediately caused smoke or steam. Uh, I noticed this after a wheeling trip that it smelled a little too sweet to be engine oil. So here we are. The problem I found was these lines are hard to find. I tried searching a lot of places online. I couldn't find the lines. I'm sure I could get them at a dealer. From what I'm hearing, they ain't cheap. 100, 200 bucks. And to be honest, I didn't love the idea of these hard lines that run literally right behind the exhaust. To me, that sounds like for a cooling line, uh, it's right next to a really hot thing and it's in a a uh, line that is conductive to heat. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So what I decided to do was one, replace my cooling lines with something that's a little more service serviceable by your average Joe, me, and two, run them away from the exhaust. So what I did is I got a bunch of um, pre-made, not pre-made, I got a bunch of transmission cooling rubber lines and I built new lines. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you what I did to build them. So the basics of how this cooler is supposed to be connected, which like I said is already done, is um, you take the, there's a couple ways you can do it. The way that's recommended, the way that was recommended to me, one, because of the region that I live in, and two, um, because of the form factor of the Jeep, you know, just where everything is, is mounted, is put the transmission cooler in front of the radiator so that it gets the first coldest air coming into the, the uh, grill of the Jeep, and put the transmission cooler before the radiator, and that is plumb it before the radiator, so that the pressure line comes out of the transmission, into the auxiliary cooler, into the, or out of the cooler, into the radiator, the reservoir in the radiator, from the radiator back into the, the return line on the transmission. The reason for that is, in a climate like mine, where it's hot part of the year and cold, very cold sometimes, the other part of the year, you don't want the transmission fluid to be too cold, but you also don't want it to be too hot. So the external cooler is supposed to help keep it cool, but if it's post, if it's cooling after the radiator, that means that whatever heat it could have picked up to keep the transmission fluid warm in the winter will be wasted in the external cooler. I've seen some guys put them after the radiator because they feel like the radiator is making the fluid too hot, uh, but I decided that that's not the way I want to do it. I also know some people that have completely eradicated the transmission, um, sorry, the radiator cooler 
and they go with just the external cooler. And that's fine if you're in a climate where it doesn't get too cold, because again, you don't want the transmission fluid to get too cold, because the transmission won't operate properly that way. But you don't want it too hot, because heat kills automatic transmissions. So I'm working on installing this B&M transmission cooler. My goal is to basically get it zip-tied or somehow attached to this V-brace here behind the grill using these mounting holes that are on here. But I got to get it in there. And as you can tell, I can't fit it through the grill because it's a bad angle. So I saw a guy on YouTube put it in through here. So the way to do that is I had to take out the light and the bezel, the headlight and the bezel. Then there's this rubber flap here that keeps air flowing, I suppose, into the radiator instead of getting lost in the light here. I had to basically push that through. And now there's just enough space here to fit the cooler through. So I'm gonna try to get it in that way. And once it's in there, I'll have to work through here to get it zip tied, which, okay, let's see if I get some light here. All right, so this is the mounting location I've chosen for the cooler. You can see zip ties. Um, comes with the zip ties, or it's supposed to. Mine didn't, but it's supposed to. So I assume that is an acceptable mounting method. Uh, basically this V brace that's on the inside of the grill in front of the radiator, um, I have zip tied it to the V. You can see the V there. I have one of the hoses connected that's kind of in the way. I'm going to zip tied it to the top on the outer hole and I got through the two holes on the bottom. At first I mounted it down here and I thought it didn't have enough um, access to air so I moved it up here. This also makes the hoses work a little better, so that is where I've chosen to mount it. Okay, so now I'm just trying to show you how... It's really tight under here, I'm sorry, but here, I'll move back a little bit. See how everything has a very nice coating of grunge all over it? Including, I mean, look, this is the... Sorry, this is hard to see. How about here? See how, I mean, a lot of this is mud on the skid plate, but you see the arm? up here for the skid plate that's just covered in oil. I thought it was a valve cover leak and it turns out that it is the transmission lines. You can see right there, I don't know if you can see it that well. See how that line's all wet? That's one of the transmission cooler lines. And I think that when I um, did the transmission, I was going to replace those lines, and I thought they looked okay, and I didn't replace them. I should have, because I think disturbing them made some little pin leaks in them, so that when they're under pressure, uh, they started leaking. Jeep started smoking. Not horribly, but enough that I noticed. So that's what I'm trying to replace. Uh, by tracing these lines, you really can't see this. Let me move the light. Uh, you see those two rubber lines. So the steel lines turn into rubber lines and they go into the, the radiator. So I did a bit of an experiment here. I took the upper line on the transmission and cut it since I had to cut it anyway. And then put it over this nice drain bin here. And I wrapped a napkin or a paper towel around the piece that I cut or the other end of it. And then I started the Jeep, put it in gear for a couple seconds, took it off just to see where the fluid was going. The upper line on this transmission is the return, not the send. Uh, in the beginning of this video, which I might edit out, I said that that was the send. It's not. It's the return. Information I got online was wrong, and I went and searched, found some more information that confirms that indeed the upper line is the return. On the radiator, the passenger side line, which you probably can't see here, though it's way up there in the distance, the passenger side line is the return because that's the upper line. So my cooler is supposed to go before the cooler in the radiator. So this line is the one that comes from the transmission. Uh, I'm going to cut it and the output of my cooler goes to it. This I'm just going to cut off and make a new line that goes back to the transmission. 
So I'm working on my lines. You see the hose I have up there with a the zip tie around it? That's one of the new lines. I had this great idea, actually recommended to me by uh, Napa Auto Parts. Take an old garden hose, cut it in segments, split it, like that, slide it over the hose, and then zip tie it in place. And then you have a shield wherever it's going to rub against things. So uh, here's the input line from the trans, or sorry, from the cooler. I patched it into the cooler, and the cooler runs back out. So it comes, uh, yeah, from the trans to the cooler, from the cooler to the radiator, from the radiator back to the trans. So uh, that's the outlet back to the trans. You can see it there. See how I have it all double hose clamped? That was recommended to me by another friend. Um, I got mixed reviews as to whether you should double hose clamp or not, so I hope I'm doing the right thing. There's the cutoff ends from the old trans lines. They're going to be ripped out of there when I'm done. That's where I am for now. I'm gonna run it up over the motor mount back there, which you probably can't see. There's too much crap in the way. I'm gonna run them up over the motor mount, shield everything I have to, and down to the trains. So I have decided, I don't know how you can see this, uh, one of the lines, and I don't know that it, because of the way I have this mounted, I don't know if it matters whether I use the inlet or outlet, because they're not marked, anyway. So I'm gonna take one of the lines, and run it down. There's a nice little gap here that takes you at the bottom of the grill. And then I'm basically going up by the power steering line. You can't, probably can't see it from up here that well. You see the nice black hose there? That's the new one. I'm gonna tie it to the power steering line, figure out if I have to shield the two of them or something so they don't rub and wear each other. Then I'm gonna go over the motor mount and it's hard to see from up here, I'm sorry. I'm gonna avoid the steering linkage, follow the fender, and come out of the fender right above the transmission. You can see the, where the hose stops right there. It's sort of out of focus down there in the back. Um, at that point, I may have to have a couple inches or a foot or so of extension on it yet, and then I'm gonna link up with the hard line that I'm gonna cut off the transmission. Okay, so now comes the fun part. I need to put a bubble flare on the end of this. This is something I've only done once. In fact, I just bought this tool. Um, but the concept is you get this into this little harness here and you basically press a bubble flare on. Okay, so we've got this all rigged up. Basically, we take this little guy here and we put it on like this. And then that gets set into there. You'll see there's like this little nipple on there. It goes into the center of the tube you're trying to do. Make sure this is good and sensor, centered, and you tighten this until you have a nice bubble flare. I will show you the result in a moment. So that's what that looks like. And this, that fits into the tube, and then it presses it like so. If I pull this out of here, you should see a nice little flare on the end of that. Sorry, this is hard to record and do at the same time. Especially since I put the vise in the way here. And I drop it on the floor. There you have it. Bubble flare. And the idea is that this will keep the hose from sliding off when I crimp it on there. On focus. There you go. Bubble flare. I'm going to clean it up and then I can put it on the hose. Bubble flared. And see the bubble here? That's what keeps the pressure in there. This is the original fitting. It'll go to the upper mount. So this is the return from the radiator. It'll go to the upper mount, the upper hole in the transmission. I'm going to put some Teflon, uh, the, the paint on stuff. Uh, and that's one end. I got to get the other end and then I can hook this all up Make sure all my hoses are good and secure and I should be done Okay, folks, and that's it now you've seen how I've created the lines um, My one regret is that I didn't get enough solid line uh, So I'm probably going to revisit the return line 
from the radiator back to the transmission because I had to patch it too many times. Uh, I ended up with a line that was just a little too short and I got a line that was a little bit like just long enough to get me back to the transmission and the, 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 the patch that I got was a slightly smaller size than the rest of it so it didn't fit on my fittings properly and it was real pain in the ass. Uh, what I'm going to do is go out to Napa or someplace where I can just get a, a length of this hose with, that's not prepackaged because a lot of the stuff I bought was prepackaged from Advance Auto. Um, I'm going to get the stuff that's not prepackaged and just get like 10 feet of it and cut a line that's exactly as long as I need it instead of this whole patchwork that I've got. So uh, that'll, I don't have to record that. Uh, basically, I'm going to try to make that happen. I'm also going to look into getting a cooling gauge, not a cooling gauge, but a temperature gauge to put in line with one of these lines so that I can actually see what temperature my transmission is getting up to, especially when I'm out on the trail. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Remember to like the video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, dislike it if you really want to. Uh, give me some comments. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. Be sure to subscribe because that's awesome. The closer I get to a thousand, the happier I'll be. And don't forget about our Teespring shop. On Teespring, you can get some pretty cool t-shirts that I've designed, and I'm working on some new designs that I'll hopefully be coming up with and uh, promoting shortly. So yeah, that's it, folks. Don't forget about Patreon, too. Uh, you can support me directly monetarily via Patreon if you want to, if you like what I'm doing here. If you don't like what I'm doing here, I don't expect you to pay. I will always produce these videos for free. Um, more money means more content, though, so that would be awesome. At any rate, thanks for watching, folks, and have a good one.